Okay, so we are going to now talk about chapter two, uh, tables, keys, and relationships. Um, and we're just really going to focus on a few th key things in this um, in this lecture. Um, the things I really want to focus on are uh, understanding keys, the basic principles of normalization, and continuing to expand upon relationships uh, and the idea of referential integrity. Right? These are the things. These are the areas where uh, I really want to focus because these are the larger database concepts. So we'll talk a little bit about understanding database design, importing data, and other things that are more access specific. Um, but really dedicate our time to explaining uh, some of these few key concepts, right? Because these are the important things. These are the things that I find important from a, a test perspective and a project perspective. All right, so let's move on. So three-step database design process. Uh, entities, attributes, and relationships, right? Uh, these are um, important concepts of entity relationship diagram. An entity is a table, effectively. Uh, an attribute is a field in a table, and a relationship is, of course, the the, uh, the relationship between tables. Okay, so um, I guess some real world advice: uh, you want to break down compound fields into their parts. This is part of what's referred to as normalization, which we talk about a little bit later. Um, for example, names need to be broken up into first and last name fields. Uh, addresses should be broken up into street address, city, state, and zip. Um, phone numbers shouldn't have anything else. You want your fields to be singular, and that's very important for, for databases. Uh, so we've talked a little bit about design view in chapter one. Uh, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but uh, really just you know recapping that we have fields in design view, and then we have more specific things that we specify uh, for fields to manage the input of data down here. And you'll actually see this in your chapter two and I believe chapter three exercise. Okay, so uh, importing data from other sources, you'll figure out how to do this uh, in your exercises. We don't need to spend too much time doing this. Uh, entering, data in, entering data in manually is something that we do pretty easily in Access, uh, but I do want to make you aware of undoing. Um, undoing and redoing uh, is limited in Access. It's, it's a little more difficult. And one of the reasons is because it has to do a lot in the background. And uh, we're going to talk a little later about referential integrity. And that basically means that if you delete a field to a related table uh, that has a related entry, it's going to delete that data as well. So there's a lot of implications that come with undoing and redoing that you don't necessarily see in Excel, but you do have in Access. So you want to be aware of that. All right, so let's see, moving on. We want to talk about understanding and designating keys. So there's three types of keys, uh, and the first two are the most important for us. Uh, and this third one is, the, um, is an understanding that you can have a key that exists of, that can consist of more than one field. So uh, primary and foreign key. So a primary key is a unique identified uh, field um, that identifies each record in a table, right? So it's it's a unique identifier. And a lot of times in Access, these will be um, auto number fields. Uh, and then a foreign key is a value in a table that is the primary key of another table. Let's take a quick look at what I'm talking about here. So in the employees field here, so I'm looking at the relationships view uh, of this uh, inventory example. Um, the, if we go to the design of the employees uh, table, we can see that we have an ID, which is uh, denoted as a primary key by the key right in front of the uh, ID field. You can actually, uh, when you right click, you can actually set a field as a primary key. And then also notice that it's listed as an auto number. And the reason why you list it as an auto number is because it's just auto numbers and you can ensure that you always have a unique identifier for every entry in the table, right? Pretty easy to do uh, by just having it as an auto number as opposed to some you know, specific type of number like a social security number or something like that, uh, which is actually not a good idea to use as a primary key. 
um, because uh, when you pass away, someone else uses your social security number. So there could be duplicate entries. So you should never use it as a primary key, for example. Um, and so employees relates to inventory transactions and the very simple relationship that an employee can make many transactions, right? So, uh, or an employee can uh, uh, be responsible for many transactions, whatever. And so if you look into this particular um, uh, table design here, you have a field for employee. And if you look at the table design, click yes, uh, you can see that employee is actually related to the employee ID. And that's what's important to know, is that if we go back to relationships, when you drag or create a relationship, and I'll, I'll actually do it right here, right? Um, I'm gonna delete, yep, yep. Uh, oh, it won't let me do it. Let's see, because I need to close this. I need to close probably a bunch of these. Let's close this. Uh, I think I might be able to do this. Delete, yes. Oh, it won't let me do it. Um, Let's close everything. Now let's delete it. it says yes. Okay, so now I've I have no relationship between employee and transactions, but I do have an employee field. So if I look at the table design real quick, you can see that I have an employee field, which is a number. It's not a name, it's not the name of the employee, it's a number, and that number is related to the ID in the employee's table. So to create a relationship, a one-to-many relationship between ID and employee, all I need to do is drag ID over to employee, and it will ask me what type of relationship I want. Uh, it's smart enough to know that I want a one-to-many relationship, and it gives you the uh, two fields of interest. Uh, there's also a thing called referral and referential integrity that we'll talk about uh, later on, meaning that um, you can make sure that uh, the ID actually does exist in employees when someone enters a new relationship into inventory transactions. That's referential integrity. It has to reference something uh, that, it, that constitutes the relationship. So we've created it. Oop, I might have created it incorrectly here. Let's delete it one more time. And I'm just going to create it again. Uh, I'm going to enforce referential integrity. And I'm going to create it. And then I've got my one to many relationship that I had before. OK? All right, let's go back to the slides. That's primary and foreign keys. Primary key, the one existing, is the unique identifier in the table. I'm going to go back and foreign key, the value in the table that is the primary key of another team. And then a composite key simply means that you can have more than one uh, field existing as a key. So I could have an auto number and a social security number being my composite key, for example. But we don't mess with that too much. Okay, so we talked about uh, specific data types. So you have short text, you have data types like short text, long text, numbers, date and times. Um, and you want to be uh, very specific about this because, you, again, as I've explained uh, in earlier lectures, you want to be very explicit about the types of data your table will accept. So here are some more data types, currency, auto number, of course, the one we just talked about. Uh, you can have a Boolean, yes, no, true, false checkbox, uh, and then different objects uh, that we don't, we don't mess with too much. You can have hyperlinks, you can include attachment objects, you can have calculated fields and lookup wizards. These are all the different types of database, data types that you can have. Um, and with respect to data types, you want to be very discreet and explicit about field size. Right? You don't want large fields of data where you're only going to be having only a few characters, or vice versa, where you can't accommodate all the specific types of data that will be entered into your table. And so we talked about design view, and we've looked at the, you know, both general uh, ways to specify data types and the more specific ways that you can 
restrict the types of data your table and fields will accept. So for example, you can create an input mask. And one of the ways this is really useful is in accepting phone number data. And I believe you actually do this uh, in one of your exercises. So an input mask creates what's known as a regular expression. So it, it looks kind of funky, but this is the way, this is the language, if you will, of saying, okay, access, I only want you to accept 10 digit, 10 digit phone numbers and I'm going to give you, I'm going to give the user a nice display to enter in data to make sure that they only enter in 10 digit phone numbers. Uh, and so you would enter this in the format field properties where you have lots of different properties for specifying input masks. Okay, so primary and foreign keys. We're back to keys, which are a very important concept. Um, in this particular example, participant ID is the primary key. And like I showed you uh, in the design view, you can right click and I can I think I might be able to uh, unclick this as a primary key might not let me no it, it doesn't um, but you can designate other fields as the primary key which would be odd to designate company as the primary key but this is where you do it so that's the primary key and we showed you how to uh, link primary and foreign keys through creating a relationship but what you must understand is that if we go to our relationships here uh, and actually click on our table design, as I'm constructing the inventory transactions table, for example, I actually have to make a manual entry of employee and c call it a number and then link it through relationships later on. Okay, so composite keys, right? Existing of one or more keys. Uh, there's ways to do that. I don't think we uh, you have any exercises that do this, but just know that it, it is available. Uh, to define a primary key, uh, I showed you the right-click way. There's also, if I was to go to table design, um, I believe in database tools. Oops. Uh, let's see. If we go to, I think there's also a primary, oops, excuse me, way to define your primary key uh, through some other means as well um, when you are defining or designing your database. Um, it changes from version to version, so uh, there is a primary key button available here. Uh, normalization. Um, so let's, this is an important concept. Um, whereas before, in the last slide, we're you know, talking about how to define a primary key. Uh, here we're talking about how to minimize duplication of information, how to produce redundancy, how to keep tables small, and how to um, uh, use foreign keys, where even though they're redundant, they're relating to data to keep your actual tables from being redundant. So that's the process of normalization. The goal is to reduce redundancy and duplication, right? And we do that by keeping tables nice and small and discreet. You never want your tables to get too big. If they are too big, ask yourself how you can break them up. Because if you don't break them up into a one-to-many relationship, you could also break them up into a one-to-one. -one. So again, we have one-to-many relationships, many-to-many, -many, and one-to-one. -one. Now that one in the middle, I'm not going to talk about it. And the reason why is because I want to enforce the idea that many-to-many -many relationships can be broken up into one-to-one -one and one-to-many relationships. You can actually, you, you don't necessarily have to have many-to-many many -many relationships. And as I've been taught, and as many others have been taught as well, uh, that um, good design doesn't have to have many-to-many -many relationships. Okay, so we talked about relationships and how to construct them. Um, and I showed you how to create a one-to-many relationship. I showed you the relationships window, which is this guy right here, which you get to from uh, your database tools. Uh, and um, you can look for yourself at many-to-many -many relationships, um, which are um, actually enforced through a one-to-many and uh, through multiple one-to-manys 
uh, in Access. Like it doesn't actually allow you to just do them. Uh, so that's a good indicator to you that it's not necessarily the most sound database design. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about enforcing referential integrity, which when we created that relationship back here, um, uh, notice that I actually had the option, or I checked the option to enforce referential, referential, referential integrity, meaning that um, when I am creating a database entry in inventory transactions and I add an employee number, it has to refer to an employee ID. So enforcing referential, referential integrity, where values in the field on the one side are unique, but the foreign key value cannot be added uh, to the many side without having a matching primary key value on the other side. And then matching fields on both sides of the relationships have to also be the same data type. So uh, cascading, updating, and cascading, deleting is an additional measure of enforcement. Meaning that when I update database, when I update data in my tables, uh, it enforces referential integrity. And then when I delete, uh, it will actually, it can actually delete associated records to make sure your databases stay clean. There may be times when you want to do this, there may be other times when you don't. And we'll talk a bunch about that uh, in your exercises. So, quick reference for referential integrity rules. So, Access does a good job enforcing the rules on defining a relationship. The primary key values on the one side must be unique. Uh, foreign key values on the many side of the relationship must exist as the primary key field. Uh, and matching key fields on both sides of the relationship are defined with the same data type. They must be. Okay, so in summary, well-functioning databases require some upfront planning and design. And you'll see this in your exercises in your projects, culminating in your projects. Uh, you need to look at the tables, the fields, and how the tables are related to each other and think a lot about it. Uh, you can import data from wherever you want, but it's really about that design. And so important to, to remember is the idea of normalization, which minimizes duplication, and the different types of keys that we can add to our tables, primary, foreign, and composite, primary and foreign being the two ones we we'll use the most, and the different types of relationships uh, that are um, that the keys reference, right? One to many and one to one, the two main ones. And then you also have uh, many to many relationships in Access as well. Okay, so referential integrity, again, ensures relationships remain consistent and data remains clean. Um, and you have the option to enforce it or not, and to enforce cascading, updating, and deleting. And that's it. So I really want you to think a lot about normalization, keys, uh, and relationships for this lecture. And that is all I have, and I will talk to you soon.